Thank you, Joanne. Yes, we long to worship you, our Father in heaven. Psalm 113, verse 3, it says, From the rising of the sun until the going down of the sun, may the Lord's name be praised. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. It's an awesome day. It's a good and godly day. Hey, we're in Lent and I just want to invite you uh, to join with me on February 29th, February 30th, and February 31st. I'm going to be fasting for Lent. You with me? And I know some of you are saying, Pastor Ed... There's no February 31st, and you're right, there is no February 31st, but uh, seriously, uh, it says in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 16 and 18, 218, where Jesus is on the Sermon on the Mount, he speaks about fasting, he says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, oh, I'm fasting, for they disfigure, and remember that word, Figure, disfigure their face, Transfiguration Sunday, their face to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, Jesus says, they have received the reward in full. But when you fast, Pastor Ed, when you fast, Tabor Church, put oil on your head. Wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So uh, there we go, having a good word. And uh, just real quick, as we want to get into worship, I can only think of one announcement. And again, this is always interactive. It's, uh, we are, I know you're there, but we want you to participate in the service with us. So um, if you have any announcements, you type them in. And I know you're all saying, hi, everybody. And that's what's great. That's how we're communicating with each other. And if you want to say where you're from, I know sometimes people are traveling up in the mountains. And that the beauty of this technology is they can still be with us. So the only announcement I can see is um, that uh, perhaps you have heard, it just came out this week, that um, every four years, the United Methodist Church has a general conference. And that's where they make all the decisions about the denomination. And there are some decisions that need to be made um, that are going on in de the denomination. And because of COVID, last year's was postponed. At 220 would have been it. And they postponed it to this year. And as you know, we're still in a pandemic. And they don't feel that because this is a worldwide thing where people come from all over the world. And, you know, there's travel bans. And they don't really feel they could do it on Zoom because of the very important nature of this next general conference. So just letting everyone know that it's being postponed to uh, 2022. If anybody has any concerns or questions about that, uh, just let me know. We're actually uh, going to be with our bishop on a Zoom meeting on a Monday night to get more information about it. So uh, just uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, that's all the announcements I have. Anybody else have an announcement? Uh, have we had any birthdays yesterday? Betty? Happy birthday, Betty. Yeah, so uh, just uh, good stuff. We praise God for all the wonderful things. And, and we know there's, um, it's a mixed bag. But uh, we will celebrate as we can and we will pray on the other things. But uh, let's now... Come before the Lord as we get ready to worship the Lord. Let us call ourselves to worship. And we're going to go to Psalm 42 as we do that. Let us meet with God. As the deer pants for streams of water. Hope in God for we shall again praise him. Yes, it does. And he's a good God. He's a wonderful God. So let's sing hymn number 174. His name is wonderful. And I always said, if it's nice, sing it twice. So we're going to sing this. Uh, it's a shorter one. So his name is wonderful two times.
Amen. Yes, great song. And thank you. And trusting you at home, you were all singing along and uh, bow down before him. So now let us all come together, as we said, praying together. Let's do our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, wake up our body, mind, and soul with a renewed spirit. We desire to meet with you and experience you in our life. We come to you with our burdens and look to you for rest. May your peace, which passes all understanding, calm our hearts. Help us to make you the top priority in our life. Please give us hope, joy, and love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'd ask the little kids to come up. And uh, I appreciate uh, some people have sent pictures in of uh, the kids watching the big screen TV with the kids up front. So, uh, you know, I just love that. So, uh, kids, I uh, just got something I want to show you here. Uh, but before I show you, I want to talk to you about, um, you remember Christmas, right? Christmas was a good time, a fun time, a great time. And then we're coming up on Easter. That's another great and a big time uh, just in our world and in the Bible and it, for Jesus. You know, we, we, but before we get to Easter, there's a day in between there that's a little sad. There's a day in between there called Good Friday. And I think you know about Good Friday. That's a couple days before Easter, that Friday before that Sunday that we celebrate Easter. Something very sad happened. Jesus died on the cross. And that makes us sad. And Jesus even experienced that with his disciples. Uh, we're going to study a story today where Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, You're the Messiah. And Jesus is like, great, Peter, that is great. I am the Messiah. And then Jesus goes on to describe that being the Messiah, the Savior, the one who's going to come and save us from our sins, being that he's the Savior, the way he's going to do that is that he's got to die on the cross. Now, Peter and all the disciples, like you and I would be like, no, Jesus, we don't want you to die on the cross. That's horrible. We want you to stay and be with us and not die and, and not get hurt. But Jesus is saying, that's the, what I have to do. And, and they were very sad. And, and so Jesus wanted to, to um, give them some encouragement, give them some hope. So he gave them a peek. So I want to give you a little peek of something. And you tell me what you see. Did you see it? Do you need another peek? Did you see it? All right, so what did you see? It's something that reminds you of Easter, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, wait a minute, what was that? And Jesus, that's just what, Jesus gives his disciples, three of them, a glimpse of hope. He goes up on a mountain, and check this out. Some people think it was Mount Tabor. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk, yeah, we don't know for sure. The Bible doesn't say, but that's what tradition or some people think. Now, we'll talk more about that. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But we know it was a high mountain. And on that mountain, Jesus shows his glory. And he also shows them people that lived a long time ago that were there with Jesus in his glory. And that gave them great hope. Because we know even when then somebody is no longer with us. And that makes us sad. And maybe you know somebody that's no longer with us. But Jesus gives us hope. He gives us a picture of Easter. So kind of in our life, it's sort of like Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter. We have good times in life and we're happy. And then there's times where we're a little sad. And, and I know you might be feeling sad too. Maybe because of you can't 
that things aren't the way they were or, or maybe they're because you're missing other people or maybe it's because somebody you know is no longer here with us. And that hurts Jesus too and that's why Jesus came to give us a peek, to give us encouragement, to give us hope that Good Friday, when he died on the cross, wasn't the end. That we are people of Easter. We celebrate that Jesus conquered death, that Jesus rose again. And he said, because he did, you will too. And we will be with all of our loved ones who believe in Jesus forever and ever and ever. Now, I don't know how long you knew the people before you, you had to say goodbye to them or they're not with you, and, that, and that's sad. But there'll be a time, we don't know when, but there'll be a time when we're people of Easter and we know that we will forever be with them and Jesus forever and ever and ever. So whenever you get sad, I want you to look around, get a glimpse. Maybe it's flowers coming up. Maybe that'll give you hope. Maybe you look up at the sky and you see the stars did you know that this closest star is our sun? Do you know when you look at it, all those stars, they could be suns to a whole nother... Pl I mean, that just blows my mind, kids. But that just makes me think of... That is a glimpse of God, in a sense. And that just... And, get the, and the Bible says that the heavens, the skies, declare the glory of God. Or I look out in nature. God is always giving us glimpses because he wants to give us hope and you know where I get my hope from you and you and you and you and you you give me hope because when I see you you all cheer me up so again let's keep cheering each other up let's keep getting glimpses of God's glory and you have that in you God is living in you let's pray God we thank you for giving us a glimpse to give us hope and to give us encouragement. We look forward to that day when our time comes, when we can be with you forever and ever and ever. And we thank you that that's possible because of your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all the wrong things that I did and that we all did so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we can be in heaven forever Amen. Well, thanks, kids, for joining with me. If you ever have any questions about that, I'd love to talk about it. And I got some special things coming up all the month of March that I want to do with you. So keep tuned. And if you don't hear from me, you contact me and say, well, what's going on? Because we got a lot of fun things coming up, okay? Hey, right. Well, let's uh, come to the adults with the word of God. For the children of God. Do we have any children of God out there also? Yeah, praise God, we're the children of God. Well, I come to you with the book of Mark. We're continuing Mark. Uh, we're going to jump ahead. We were in Mark 1 for a while there. Now we're, and we'll explain why we're jumping ahead. It's, uh, again, one month from today is Palm Sunday. Okay, so we can't, we're not studying the book of Mark. We're on the lectionary. And to be honest, I'm a little behind, but we're going to get caught up. Because traditionally, and we'll get into it, this scripture, the Transfiguration, would have been read right before Ash Wednesday. Now, obviously, you know Ash Wednesday moves around, as does Easter, and I can explain that to you if you want. Not today. But anyway, we started the season of Epiphany with the baptism of Jesus, which was really cool because this voice came out of the sky. God says, this is my son. And then today, we're going to hear a similar thing of that. So traditionally, this would have been read during the season of Epiphany, before Lent started. So you have these bookends of who is Jesus. God the Father is telling you at the beginning and the end of the Epiphany. And we saw last week where even the demons told us who Jesus was. Now they know who Jesus is. They even believe in Jesus is. And I'm welcoming you to find out who Jesus is today. And today, just like we were telling the kids, he's going to give us a great glimpse of who he is. 
So uh, let's go to our scriptures again. Uh, Mark chapter 1, chapter 9, verse 1. And he said to them, Jesus speaking, Truly I tell you, some, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led him up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. My mom uses downy. <laughs> this is a great commercial. for. <laughs> and there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Verse 7, then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. A little diversion here, but you'll see where it comes in later. Okay, so don't throw rocks yet. I went to get a checkup, you know, general checkup, physical thing. And uh, after the checkup, the doctor said, well, is there anything else that you would like to talk about? Actually, doctor, um, I'm a little concerned about my wife, Karen. I think her hearing's starting to go. He says, whoa, um, all right, well, here's a real simple test you can do to see um, how her hearing is. When you're in a room and she's on the other end of it, ask her a question in your normal voice. If she doesn't answer it, walk halfway across the room and ask her again. If she still does not answer, then go right up behind her and ask her the question and see if she answers then. So uh, the other night, uh, Karen was cooking in the kitchen. You know, she's got her back to me. I thought this would be a perfect time to see how her you know, hearing is. So I was on the other side of the room, just coming into the room, and she was at the stove, and I said, Karen, what's for dinner? So I moved halfway to the room. Karen, what's for dinner? She said nothing. I went up right behind her. I said, Karen, what's for dinner? She turned around all annoyed and said, chicken for the third time. <laughs> so maybe we have a hearing problem. Maybe we have a listening problem. And what does the scriptures just tell us that God said when Peter doesn't know what to do and he's saying, I'm going to do this and he's says he didn't know what to say and he's saying some crazy stuff and God's saying stop listen to Jesus okay so we could just end it right there that's a pretty good mess but uh we're, we got some more meat and potatoes for you um as we go into this transfiguration I want to present an idea that I've talked about before but I like to reinforce it because I know some people don't believe you know, everything we're saying right now. And I get that. Um, I personally like um, being able to prove to what we believe. My background is science and math. Very exacting things. Evidence. And then you're like, well, how can you believe in Jesus? Well, I'm saying, to me, I will show you there is a lot of evidence. And I mean evidence to believe in Jesus, to believe in God. Now, 
again, without making that the part of our sermon, I would come to people and say, my friends who are scientists or in this, that world, I would say if we are being intellectually honest, and that's what we should be as science, open up to whatever the evidence shows us. And I would often, my take is that if we are intellectually honest, that everything in the world points to something beyond our world. I would introduce that there are two worlds. There is this physical world, and then there is another world. I'm going to say a spiritual world. Um, some people would say a super, whatever word you feel more comfortable with, there's another world beyond us. And I would say as I look to the DNA molecule, that is not of something that just happened in this world. I would say that that is an incredible design. And that just didn't happen randomly, because that's what we would have to... And I would say that is evidence of... Again, if you're not comfortable saying that, I'm just saying at least admit that it's something beyond our world. It is something that we cannot explain. And I know for my science friends, they're saying, yes, there's many things we cannot explain. And we're going to keep on researching. And I get that, and we should do that, because I'm going to tell you, the more we research, the more you're going to see the hand of God in this world. So you keep on researching. We did not always have a DNA molecule to look at. So I'm saying keep on showing, because the more I, the more we study the stars, and the, to me, more and more it points to a God. Now whether you believe that or not, that's up to you, that's between you. But I'm saying if you're intellectually honest, in my opinion, you have to come to at least to the conclusion that there is something beyond this world as we know it. Because everything points to that. And, if, and I get it. But is all I'm saying is you have faith in your research that you're hoping comes someday to explain it all. Explain to me how the world came into being. How did something come from nothing? How did life come from things that are not alive? It all points to something beyond. And again, we can disagree, and I respect you for your disagreeing. I just want to introduce that idea that there's these two worlds. And the great thing in our scripture today, we get a glimpse of the physical world having the spiritual world come into it. And I think it's cool because I would introduce to you the idea that from the Bible, the spiritual world, God's kingdom in the spiritual, created our physical world. And that's what's neat about that God cares so much about this physical world that he created that he sent his son to come here and to communicate to us. Listen to him. He's from another place. He's part of who created this place. He can tell us how to live. And he's not only telling us how to live, he came to save us from our sins. Um. So as we talk about this transfiguration, yeah, pull up the scripture here. Um, I alluded to the fact. Uh, well, let, let's just uh, go. I, I want to get. I want to give some background. Eh, do we do background? It's it's tricky where we want to fit all this in. Yes, we want to do background. So, God is showing up today in a special way that we told the kids. And, and here's the thing. Is this your first transfiguration time? We've No, this is not the first time, perhaps, that you've heard about the transfiguration. Like Christmas, like Easter, this is a scripture that gets visited every year. And it's good. To me, Christmas and Easter up here, the transfiguration is like right below. If we could study this for a whole season in itself. And here's the key that we'll get to. It's not just the transfiguration. It's actually what happened right before the transfiguration. So we're going to lump them together today to get the context. But before that, I want to go back to get the Jewish background of all this, uh, the Old Testament background. Um, God's glory back in the day was shown the way we got to know him. Uh, Moses seen him in a burning bush of fire. But that's not the only way that Moses experienced God. There, there was other ways. Um, Moses had the cloud that we talk about today. The cloud, the Shekinah glory the, uh, would come. Um, it co happens with the Ten Commandments. Um, Moses comes down and his face is shining. 
from the glory of God. And Moses gets upset because they have a golden calf down there and he, and he throws the, the tablets down and, and he goes into the tent of meeting, the tabernacle that they set up. And, and that's where the cloud would meet with them. Okay, now again, we're not saying the tent, that contained God. You can't put God in a box. But let's just say that's where they met with God. And Moses would go into this, the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, and the cloud would engulf it. And so we have this great things of, of where Moses and this cloud, they would be then going through the desert, going to the promised land, and they would be led by the day by this pillar of cloud. And at night they'd be led by a, the pillar of fire. So again, there's the fire showing up. Um, later through the Bible, Solomon wants to build a temple. Uh, they're, okay, they're not going to have the tabernacle anymore, and they're going to build a temple, and even then God's cloud comes to show with them that he is there, that he will meet with them there. Now, years go by, uh, and they start, you know, not worshiping the way they should. And real sad, we read about it, that God says, my presence left the temple. And they continue to worship, but they're not worshiping in spirit and truth, as Jesus said we should. They're just worshiping in the building. They're worshiping idols that they create, in a sense, laws that they created. And it's just a terrible time. God's presence wasn't there. And then Old Testament ends. And we have this prophecy that a time's going to go by. 400 years go by. And then we get the Christmas story. And what do you hear in the Christmas story? The angels come down when Jesus is born. And they say, glory to God. The glory's back. The glory, it's, it's something that's God's shining. The glory to God in the highest and peace unto his people on earth. So the glory's back. It's in Jesus because the presence of God is back. Emmanuel, God with us. And then Jesus, uh, you know, 30 years later or so, he's getting baptized. And that's what we talked about. You know, the, the cloud comes there, Jesus baptized. And if this is my son, God speaking to us. And again in the cloud. And then so this is kind of the context I want to get us into us about the glory of God. So uh, as we start out in our first verse, and this is kind of a, a side thing, but something I definitely want to speak to is um, verse 1. And he said to them, truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. Now, for a lot of Christians, we have trouble when we read this verse. And the problem is sometimes we get tripped right away when we say, because like, uh-oh, uh-oh, wait a minute. Either Jesus is coming, I come again and I missed it. Or what, does, what spin do we put on this scripture? Because uh, they all died, Pastor Ed. We have a problem here, Pastor Ed. Relax. Take a breath. Let's take it in context. Now, again, I'm just going to share with you what scholars have said. You're free to pray about it and believe what you want. And you may have another, like, Pastor Ed, no, you're wrong. Okay, just calm down. You, that's okay. We can discuss the scriptures. But if I may present this in the context, and just for your consideration, this verse comes right before the transfiguration. He's showing them the glory of God. He's white. And you know, with that comes the power. How do we end our prayer? Uh, the Lord's prayer. Power and glory forever and ever. So this is the fulfillment. That scripture shows up in each gospel, the three of them, not John. And there's a reason for that. It shows up in each gospel right before the transfiguration. Okay, so just want to give us context there. That that verse, you don't have to worry about explaining that to your friends. The verse is fulfilled with the verses coming right after it, which makes sense. So let's continue. After six days, well, what? Anytime you say after six days, usually that means or what happened six days earlier? I'm glad you asked. A very famous event, and that's why I treat this transfiguration. And there's one other event that I'm about to tell you about. It's a teaser. Okay. That's, that's why I'm saying this is up there with church events that is just great. Christmas and Easter, and then Transfiguration, and who am I? Who do people say I am? 
You're the Messiah, Peter says. That's what happens right before this. That's chapter 8, Mark chapter 8. This is the beginning of Mark 9. So we got to take that whole thing as one lump sum. Jesus comes to them, as we've been saying, as we're journeying with Jesus, and I'm asking you, as Jesus is asking you, and it's a great sermon, but we're not going to do it today, who do you say I am? And Peter says, as we all know, you've heard, it's not your first time hearing it, you are the Messiah. You are the chosen one. You're the one who's come to save us from our sins. You're the promised one. And he says, you're great, yes, and my Father in heaven has given that to you. And then Peter's got to be feeling like, And as Peter does, he, he opens his mouth when, yeah, he just, he has um, open mouth, put in foot disease as a, you know, who doesn't? But anyway, Peter's the poster child of that. And um, Jesus goes on to say, yes, I am the Messiah and the Messiah must die. He must suffer. And, and let's remember, there's a lot of prophecies about the Messiah. There are glorious prophecies about this warrior in this, like David who's going to come and establish the kingdom of God. And that's the scriptures that they cling to because that's the kind of Messiah I want. Like David, bring us back to our glory. But there's also a lot of other prophecies that we talk about, about the suffering servant that the Messiah will be. And they don't want to talk about that. And they're confused about how can we have these two pictures of the Messiah. Now, fortunately for us, under the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, we understand, with the help of God's word, that the Messiah comes twice. Once here as the suffering servant, and then again, I'm not telling you when. Hear me now. 2033, maybe, is what Jesus, it'll be like, 2,000 years since Jesus died. You're going to hear all kinds of talk about this is when Jesus, got, and he may. I don't know. But he told us, don't worry about it. Just be ready. Just be ready. You got things to do today. Don't be worrying about tomorrow. Today. All right. So Peter's confused, and Peter's looking for this political Messiah, the overcoming warrior. And Jesus is telling him, I'm the suffering Messiah at this point. I need to die. And Peter says, no. You should not die. He says, you are speaking the words of Satan. Satan has told me that. Get behind me, Satan. And that's, I don't think Peter's walking around. He's like, Jesus called me Satan. And it says, there's nothing written in any of the scriptures about what happens after that happens. It just says after six days on all of them. The one says eight days. Luke, said, Luke says about eight days. Um, but anyway, we get it. And they, so obviously we're just speculating and there's a danger to speculating. But perhaps in the Jesus camp, it's not all joy, joy, joy. They're like, we thought we're going to do. And he's talking about dying. And then he yelled at me. And, and you were all thinking it too. And. So, so Jesus, perhaps, says, I need to give him a glimpse. Now, interestingly, he only takes three, it says. He took Peter, James, and John with him. Jesus is setting up a concept here. Maybe you couldn't take them all. You know, it's Jesus' call. He decides to take three. And he's setting up this concept of where I'm going to give an experience to some... And they are going to tell others about it. They're going to give their witness, their testimony. And we are to believe their witness and testimony. We are to hear about them. And, and, and so you say, well, that would be nice if it happened to me. I'd believe all that. Well, that's not the way God always works. God gives people different stories. And that's why we love hearing other people's stories. Because in hearing other people's stories, we don't have to experience everything they went through. And you don't want to experience all they went through. But their story is, and then God. And then we say, like, praise God. I am blessed by your witness. So, so here's Jesus setting up this concept of only three, but then they're going to share their story. And there's another concept here I want you to not miss. 
Jesus knew they were sad, that they were confused, and he didn't leave them that way. Now we see that again after he leaves and he sends the Holy Spirit. So if you're sad and you're not sure what's going on, God is not going to leave us that way. I don't know for how long, but he's not going to leave us that way. Okay, so let's continue. And real quick, this is just a fun part. He took John, Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain. Now, it doesn't say Mount Tabor. But if you go to Mount Tabor in Jerusalem, anybody been to, uh, not Israel, anybody been to Israel, you could take the tour bus and go up this Mount Tabor and there's the church, the Church of the Transfiguration, because that's what we do. We build churches. Even though he told Peter not to build something, but we built a church there. Does that mean that's where it happened? We don't know. It never says. Now, there is a high mountain there in this area. of uh, It's like south, yeah, west of uh, there, the Sea of Galilee, about 20 miles to the west, down south. I, if, if you look at pictures, you know, Google it, Mount Tabor, it almost looks like, for us, like Spring Mount. You know, there's this, this um, you know, nice-sized mountain. And then for people, they're like, well, that's where it must have been. And, and some people are so, uh, they say, well, that's easy to get a tour bus up. And it's good for tourism. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but some others have said that. Some people would say, actually, we think, because it says a high mountain, and, you know, would you call Spring Mount a high mountain? Compared to what? <laughs> but some people think it was Mount Hermon, which is the highest mountain in Israel. It's actually the highest mountain in the Middle East. And... Um, but you can't get a tour bus up there. <laughs> and it's very high. But it doesn't matter. No. But I just wanted to mention it to you because Tabor is um, part of the transfiguration story, perhaps. Um, it's also there. There was a battle in the Old Testament with Barak. No kidding. There, he's a general. A Barak. And it was a great uh, battle. That we do know took place on Mount Tabor. But um, here we are, Tabor, on top of a hill. I don't know the history. I got to learn our history yet. But I can't. I got to imagine that the church founder said, yeah. And, and I Googled it. You Google it too. There are Mount Tabor United Methodist churches. There are. But I could not find another Tabor United Methodist church. You are unique, Tabor United Methodist church. All right. Back to the scriptures. No fun. They went to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured. Metamorpho is the, uh, the Greek there. And uh, the trans means across, like transcontinental figure. His figure was transformed before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. This is telling us that he, what we are seeing is not of this world. It's whiter than white, okay, if we could imagine that. And if I took a bright light out and shined it in your face, maybe then we'd get an idea of what this brighter than white is. And, and that picture shows up in other places. Um, if you go to the beginning of Revelation, we see Jesus whew, really bright. Verse 4, and there appeared before them Elijah and Moses. Now, there's been a lot made of these two, and, they, and it should be. This is very representative. Elijah, perhaps one of the greatest of the prophets, but, but as a prophet, one who pointed to Jesus, one who prophesied. And all the prophets, they were prophecies about Jesus. Now, did the people listen to the prophecies? Not really. And, and interestingly, Elijah never died. The chariot came down got you, and took him up. So here's this neat figure that we get to see. Elijah also had another mountain experience that we talked about a little while ago when we were talking about anxiety and depression in the mountain. So uh, mountains and Elijah, nothing new. Okay? How about Moses and mountains? Again, nothing new for Moses either. 
Moses is a representative, obviously, of the law, the Ten Commandments. Could we keep them? So maybe that's the reason why he's there, that we couldn't keep, we didn't listen to the prophets, we can't keep the Ten Commandments, not to beat us down, it's just to show us why we need Jesus. And they're there with Jesus. Now, another neat thing with Moses is, Moses was not allowed to go into the promised land because uh, he had some, a failure, let's just say a personal failure. God said, no, you're a great man, Moses. And God loved him so much, Moses actually got the distinct uh, distinction of God said, I'm going to bury Moses when he dies. Wow. So that happens. But here we are in the promised land, and Moses is in the promised land. Do you know why? Because Jesus is the Messiah. He's with the Messiah. The Messiah made it possible for him to be there and for all of us to be in the great promised land, let's say. Now, some people are like, again, it can get confusing. Like, wait a minute. They didn't believe in Jesus. And you're telling me I got to believe in Jesus. You're telling the kids they got. They looked forward to trusting and believing in the Messiah. And that's how they get to heaven. We look back trusting and believing in the Messiah, and we know the Messiah's name to be Jesus Christ. Okay, so really, and we could go on and on about this Elijah and Moses. There is so much there. That's why I'm saying, you know, we, I know we got Lent, and that, but we could spend a whole season on um, the Messiah. You know, you are the Messiah, the transfiguration. But uh, we're going to keep going on. Verse 5, Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Yes, it is. You are so lucky, so blessed. And tell others. And if you go to um, James um, in his second book, he refers a lot to this event. He says, we were on the mountain. We saw the glory of God. And, and John gives this one verse in his, because his, his gospel is a whole lot different. But if you go to John 1.14, it says, and we beheld the glory of God. It's where he's talking about the light came into the world and the Lord did not recognize it. So it's right there in the beginning of John, but it's just one line. John's gospel is different than the other gospels. Rabbi, it's good for us to be here, yes. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. No, okay? And again, I'm not, you know, it's easy. We all jump, we all dump on Peter. I'm no Peter. Peter's way more, he's, he, he's, he walked on water. Okay, not this guy. I'm the guy with the swimmies, okay? Just in case. But he, rather than us beating up on him, he did what the Jewish people did back then. They had festivals where you built shelters. They, all through the Old Testament, they're moving their tent, their tabernacle. They're building a shelter for God. Now, he, again, he's just, it says... He, verse 6, he did not know what to say because they were frightened. And, you know, obviously he said something that he shouldn't have said. And, and that's when God comes in and says, stop. All right? You're ruining the moment. <laughs> verse 7, then a cloud appeared and covered them. Again, the Shekinah glory. And a voice came from the cloud, this is my son, whom I love, chicken dinner. Listen to him. Hear him. Guys, take it from me, and I'm not sure how this works out, but you'll probably know. I went to a whole marriage conference weekend to learn, and I'm not sure how this goes. I hear my wife, but I don't listen. Or is it, or I listen to my wife and I don't hear what she said. I'm not sure what it is, but you get the idea. You can hear, or you can listen but not hear. I'm not, I'm not, I have to go back to the conference. I forget what it was. But you get the idea. You can hear, but it, if it don't sink into the noggin, and that's what God's saying, you can read these words, but take time. If you don't know what to say or what to do, then, then stop and listen. This is my son. Whom I love, listen to him. 
We've been asking, who is Jesus? The demons told us. God told us at the baptism. And God's telling us again here. He revealed the glory. And he's, God came down to say, this is my son. The son of God. This, God the Father is telling you this. this is God the Son. Suddenly, verse 8, they looked around and they no longer saw anyone except Jesus. So at the end of the day, we get a glimpse. And if you can just, everything's different from the whole, that's why we jumped ahead. The gospel's chain shift at this point. For two years, Jesus is telling them parables about the kingdom of God. And now in this, these final times, he's pouring everything into the twelve. And he's talking about being the Messiah who's going to die. And they're not comfortable with it. But as I told the kids, it's for our own good. It's for, he's, he's going to suffer so that there's a greater joy later on. And um, I just come to you and that, that's something we never want to forget. And that's something that we're always going to repeat. And we're going to repeat that today with what we believe. So if you would, let's see if I can find it here. Let's all say together what we believe. Let's, you know, whether we get a peek or whether you know it for a fact or whether you've been saying it over and over again, let's continue saying it, what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The life everlasting. Amen. Real quickly, uh, when it come to you in our, for our prayer time, find my prayer list here have some um, updates with our prayers that I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, we're praising God. Uh, we've been praying for Cliff, and um, God was very good to Cliff. So I just want to, you know, give you that detail. Uh, we've been praying for Danielle, and we're praising God that uh, Danielle, uh, her procedure went well. And um, just uh, some new things coming up is uh, if you're not part of our prayer chain and you would like to be, let us know. We want you to be a part of our prayer chain. We send out emails all week long. Um, just when we left last Sunday, there was an urgent prayer message sent out. We had um, a loved one who had a heart attack. And um, we're lifting up uh, um, Sandy's uh, sister-in-law to us because um, he didn't make it. And, um, but we were praying. And, um, and I don't mean to say this is cliché. This is heartfelt that we pray for healing and sometimes we get that physically and sometimes we get the ultimate healing spiritually. And if we could go and talk to Ed who had the heart attack, um, we'll ask him. He's going to tell you, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, so it's a great story of how he came to the Lord just a few years ago and we're praising God for that. And that's why we do what we do, we come to God and, and we praise the gospel from Mount Tabor. Uh, some other things that came up this week. Uh, Jim, uh, Richie, let us know about his brother-in-law, Dan. Um, he has COVID um, and he's at a high-risk group there. So we're definitely going to keep him in our prayers. Um, unfortunately, uh, Boyd's daughter, Amy, had some unfort very unfortunate things happen. Um, so we're going to um, pray uh, for her this uh, today. Um, also, um, some sad news from um, Kathy that uh, Craig um, has cancer and it's gotten very worse. And uh, so we're going to be lifting him up as they try to um, fight that. 
Um, Vicki had let us know that her daughter-in-law's uncle, um, Gary, he has COVID, and we're going to lift him up. Uh, his wife, Roxy, is also asking for prayers for her RA. Um, Danielle let us know that her, uh, father, her friend's father, her friend Lori, her father, Larry, um, he was in the hospital with heart problems, and he got a stent, and they had some, some complications with the bowels and his lungs, so we're going to be praying for him. And um, so uh, we also had um, uh, Cindy, um, our secretary, her friend Carol Miniger passed away, and so we're going to um, lift up their family. And um, so let's, uh, as we often talk about, this is interactive, and normally I'd pass the microphone around and, you text in your prayers and, and know that I know you, there's prayer warriors watching and they are praying for you. And, and these prayers just don't happen right here. We go back and see the prayer list and we pray for them all week and we you know, update people on that. Does anybody here have any prayers that, um, that you wanted me to? Okay. Well, let's um, come before the Lord. Uh, God... Um, we come to you and praising you for who you are. You are God, the Father Almighty. We bow down before you. We magnify your name. We exalt you. You are holy, holy, holy. As the Bible says, you are so holy and we are not. We have sinned and we... Come before you, Lord, with our sins, with our shortcomings. We ask you to forgive us for the things that we have done that are offense to you. We ask for your forgiveness for the things that you have asked us to do and that we have not done. We come to you knowing that you have said if we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins, 1 John. So Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We're not going to listen to the devil who reminds us of our sins. We're going to remind the devil of his destiny. And we're going to claim our destiny. You told us to get not stay down from our sins. You died so that we can rise up and be forgiven and to live a victorious life for you. So Lord, we come to you with our request in the power of the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we come to you praising you for Cliff. We come to you praising you for Danielle. Lord, we come to you and thank you for the many prayers that were answered. We come to you thanking you that Amy was not hurt this week. But Lord, we lift up and ask you to help her, give her wisdom in her situation. Let her know that she is not alone, that she has a church family that wants to help. Lord, we ask you to come to us and hear our prayers as we um, lift up our prayer list to you. Lord, we're praying for Rick Wright. He was uh, taken to the hospital and he's getting a quadruple bypass surgery on Monday. Lord, we're praying for Dan, who's diagnosed with COVID. Lord, heal him. Keep giving him breath. Let him breathe, Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, Craig Brown as he... Uh, is battling cancer. We lift up to you, Lord, all those who are battling cancer. We think of Bruce and Woody and Diane and Robert, Kevin, Debbie, Phyllis, Mike, Melissa, and Dan, Lord, we come to you knowing that as we pray that many people right now are thinking of other names of people that have cancer. So, Lord, we come to you. We pray for those that have the cancer and those who that are taking care of them. We lift up their families, Lord, as 
They are all going through this terrible time. May they find you. May you give them peace through this. Lord, we lift up to you also Gary and all those that are suffering from COVID. We lift up to you the healthcare workers, our teachers, and all those people that are working hard. All those people that are dealing with it, even if they don't have it, Lord, that, that are feeling the effects of the pandemic and, and it's just hurting their, their very essence. We lift them up to you. We pray for Roxy and to give her strength as she deals with her RA. We lift up to you Larry. Lord, may you be with him and help him with his uh, heart problems. We come to you as we ask you to fill the emptiness in our heart as we grieve with our brothers and sisters for the family of Ed Mitchell, for the family of Carol Miniger, and for um, all those, Lord, we know that there's many others that are um, grieving, Lord. We come to you, Lord, praying for Merle, uh, his vision, that it would get better. We're lifting up to you, June, that you continue to heal her, Lord, and get her better. We're praying for Nadja, that you would help her in her financial situation. We're praying for Susan James, as she continues to get better from COVID, but is also suffering from many other things that come as a result of that. Lord, we're lifting up our brother and our loved one, Drew. We're praying for Katie, that she would be able to get home from China. We're praying for those that have an employment situation. We're praying for those that are struggling financially. We lift up to you those that are dealing with health issues. We're praying for those that have estranged relationships. We lift up to you those that are waiting to get the vaccine. Lord, hear our prayer. Through all of this, Lord, we want to lift up the leaders of our land as they make decisions that affect the world. We pray for peace in the world, Lord. We pray for our military, our first responders. We're praying for those that don't know the glory of God, that haven't seen a glimpse. May their hearts be softened and may they open up their heart to get a mustard seed of faith in, Lord. Father, we come to you praying for all the prayers on Facebook. Whether they are today or somebody that is watching it in the future. We come to you, Lord, with our confidential prayers that have been given to us that we will keep confidential, but you know what they are, Lord, and we lift them up to you now. And we come to you, Father, in silence. Opening up our heart. Sharing what can't be verbalized. Lord, we know that there are those suffering from anxiety and depression. And Lord, our heart goes out to them as we know your heart does. And we know it's especially difficult in this time of being able to ministering to people in these situations. 
So, Lord, we ask for an extra blessing to come out to your children of those who need it most today, Lord, as we come as your children to the Father in the words our Savior has given us to say when we say, Our Father. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, again, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Tabor Church is not just a church on a hill. It is not just a church where a battle, <laughs> a reference to the Tabor Mountain, Mount Tabor. We thank you for your very great generosity that you have given, that you've been, uh, what God has asked you to do, and that's all we ever ask is that we're just, uh, we pray to God and what God, we, uh, we all have different situations and, and these are difficult times. Um, but we know that uh, as we're faithful to God, that we ask him to be faithful back to us. As, as we have given, uh, God says that he would give back to us. And we don't give to get back. We give because God is God and he's worthy of a portion of our finances. To show that we're not greedy, Lord. That this is all yours. And we're going to give joyfully. We're not going to give out of guilt. So um, we come to you, Lord, and... Uh, we would just ask you to bless our blessing as uh, we do our doxology of uh, giving, recognizing where all of our blessings come from. Amen. And again, whether it's your time, whether it's your talent, whether it's your finances, as we would say, your treasure, get the three T's in there. We ask God to bless it and we thank you for it. So let's pray together and ask God to bless whatever it is we have decided to offer to him. Gracious Father, use not only these gifts that we offer, but use us. Use our hands, use our feet, use our voices, and use our hearts to reach others for you. May their needs, their suffering, their injustice, and their pain be met in you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, it's a great song, and perhaps it's again a great prayer as we did last week, uh, just as I am, without one plea. As we talked about Jesus the Messiah, may this be your song, may this be your prayer as we conclude today. Come before Jesus. We're not perfect. Jesus doesn't expect us to be perfect. He wants us to come just as we are. Let's sing hymn number 357, just as I am, without one plea.
again, a great song and a great prayer. And uh, I would just, uh, one of the, perhaps many of you might remember, there was a time when uh, we would be in church and people would come up to the altar and pray. And maybe uh, some of you are like, well, I don't know, everybody's going to see me, everybody's going to look. And, and maybe that's just as well that we're not in church because it's no different. God is knocking on your heart. And if he wants you to open that door, and if you feel that, and, and maybe you're like, I'm not sure. I, I think I did it before. It doesn't matter. You can rededicate yourself. Just so say, Jesus, you are my Lord. And God, if anyone is feeling their heart softened today. We'd ask that they would just have you come in, knowing that they are a sinner, that they've done wrong, that they have fallen short, and that we need Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross, who rose again for our sins, so that we could be forgiven. And it's as simple as that. Jesus said that the God the Father loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. So I, again, if you have any questions about that, just contact me, slip a note under the door if you want to be anonymous, that's okay. Um, I respect you if you just want some questions. Hit. And people are always asking questions, and that's what we're here for. So as we go forth into the world... Go forth in peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you until we meet again. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Go and have a good and godly day. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Amen. Everybody, this is a signal.